we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about the 40-hour requirement, we get a lot of questions about this. Um, and um, I guess the first thing uh, to say is that uh, if uh, a member has been registered for a period that spans two years, so 24 months, then um, the expectation would be that a member is able to reflect 40 hours of engagement uh, in learning activities in the learning record. Um, and so people often ask, well, when does that start? You know, when does the clock start ticking? Um, and that's basically from your date of registration. Um, another question we get is, uh, well, okay, so between the time I start my PD tools and then the time I'm required to submit the completed basket of PD tools is less than two years. What happens in that situation? Do I really have to obtain 40 hours? And the answer there is um, that uh, a member would obtain a reasonable proportion of the hours. Um, and so you can see the little chart that's, that uh, is broken down based on the number of months uh, that someone might have been registered for, and it gives a, an estimate of the amount of hours that would be appropriate to document in the learning record uh, in that time period. And so if you're someone who's registered for 18 months, so if you think about it this way, 18 months is three quarters of a two year period. Um, and so if you do the math and you look at, well, what is three quarters of that 40 hour requirement, then we're looking at uh, a number that's 30 hours of engagement and learning activities. So didactic learning activities are the kind of activities that you, um, where you're taking in information. So maybe you're engaged in some reading, um, maybe you're sitting in on a course or, you know, a presentation at a conference or you're sitting in on the line like you are right now. That's a great example of a didactic learning activity. Experiential learning activities tend to be those where there's participation uh, on behalf of the learner. Um, and so participating in study groups, um, peer consultation, um, receiving clinical supervision, and then oftentimes, um, those kinds of learning experiences where there can be a significant amount of role playing or um, those models where you uh, need to participate in a form of psychotherapy in order to be able to uh, conduct that kind of psychotherapy. I realize not all training models work in that way, but there are some um, uh, approaches uh, to training where uh, they, they would encourage that. Um, so those are all examples of experiential learning activities and it, it's that at least one should be reflected in the learning record. We don't pre-approve education or training opportunities uh, for quality assurance purposes. And so um, it really it's up to members to identify um, education and training opportunities that are relevant to their own practice. Um, and that are credible and verifiable. So this, uh, there's a professional judgment piece here um, about uh, finding learning opportunities that are meaningful to you and to your practice and making sure that the learning opportunities um, are, are uh, sort of as, as advertised, I guess you could say. Um, and um, so that's what we mean when we say there's a lot of flexibility and there's a lot of self-direction um, that uh, it's up to you to go and um, figure out what uh, makes sense to you as a practitioner. Members are required to uh, maintain a personal portfolio of participation, evidence of participation in learning activities. And so, um, you know, this presentation is going to kind of gloss over some of the most important parts of your uh, participation in the QA program. Um, where you can find more detail is in the professional development guide. Uh, and you can find that guide on the crpo.ca website. Um, but uh, the answer to the question is, um, as you gather evidence of participation in learning activities, just tuck it aside in a folder somewhere uh, that's easily accessible uh, because the college may request that information uh, to verify that you engaged in the learning activities that you reported in your learning record. We don't need you to upload them. Uh, that's not necessary. In fact, um, the QA portal doesn't even have the capacity to accept uploaded materials in that way. So yeah, any time that you spend engaged in uh, an actual learning uh, or training opportunity, so, um, you know, any workshops that you might have been uh, engaged in at the conference, that time would definitely count towards um, your learning activities um, in the learning record.